Now everybody's talking about Bitcoin, which got me thinking, could we use Excel to analyze Bitcoin price? In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the live Bitcoin price into Excel. I'm going to show you how to get historic Bitcoin price into Excel and how to produce a nice visual analysis in Excel. That's all coming up in this video. But if we're meeting for the first time, big welcome to Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I'm Chris Mortimer. I love bringing the powerful stuff in Excel to people like you. I'm a content creator, lecturer, real world consultant, and you can go ahead and download my Excel cheat sheet. This gives you the 13 formally 21 techniques that I think you need to know in Excel. It's going to remove some of the noise for you, get you um, getting started with Excel, moving in the right direction. The link is in the description below this video. With that said, just go ahead and open a new Excel file. And let's first start with the end in mind. What do we actually want? Well, th this isn't in Excel, guys. This is from CoinMarketCap, which is a, a website. It gives us cryptocurrency prices. But this is what we're looking to work towards. This is what financial people would call a candlestick chart. So could we at least approximate this in Excel? This is what we're going to try to do. And we're going to start from scratch. This is where we're going to work towards. It should look something like this. I'm going to create this for you from scratch. So go ahead, get Excel open and open a new sheet. And then one thing we've got to bear in mind is this is only available on Excel 365, which is a little bit against the ethos of the channel. I usually only teach stuff that's available in all versions of Excel, but Excel 365, guys, it is well worth the investment. I'm not paid to say that. There's no affiliates or anything because it does so much good stuff these days, including importing live price data. So how do we get started with this? Well, firstly, we've got to tell Excel the currency that we want to import. Now, BTC is the ticker symbol. I think that's what it's called for Bitcoin. So you've got to go BTC slash, and then what currency do we want to convert to effectively? Well, I want to know how many US dollars am I getting for one Bitcoin? And I know that's about 64,000 today as far as I know. So hit enter. This has got to be 100% precise. Once you've got that typed in, we can go to data at the top, then just hit currencies. And Excel gives us a little bit of information, says you've got to have a currency pair typed in. Going to hit currencies. And then Excel is going to show this icon here. It's a data type. It means we can insert data, the live Bitcoin price. So you can just hit this symbol here. And these these are all the pieces of data, the information that we could bring in. I'm interested in the price down at the bottom here. So I can hit enter. I haven't quite got enough room in this cell. I can just double click and I can see 6377655. Just to prove this is live and that it updates, go to data now, hit refresh. And what we'll see, we'll see a little refresh icon there. And then we could see the new price ticked over. So how cool is that? Live pricing information coming into Excel with Excel 365. But if we wanted to create a candlestick chart, then you might be saying, but Chris, we don't just need the live price, do we? We also need the historic prices. Hmm. Might that be possible with Excel, particularly Excel 365? Well, let's see if we can give it a go. I'll take HOW3 here, just resizing those columns. Now, the formula we're interested in, that in now is the stock history, not the stick his history, the stock history. So just go ahead, type in stock, hit the tab key. That's going to populate the formula. But more importantly, it gives us the prompts and the prompts are useful for learning about the formula. What does this formula need? First, it says stock. Now, that's not really stock. That's actually a pairing. Or if we're talking about currencies, that's a pairing. So that's our BTC USD. It could be any other currency, a cryptocurrency pairing you wanted to look at. Then we need a start date. So where do we, the first date of our analysis, the first date of the data, an end date. And then we've got a few other options that we'll look at, that we'll look at first. So first, to control this formula properly, um, I'm going to, use cells to do that. So I'm going to say stock, start date, and make sure you're working along with me here, end date. And then I'm going to say interval. They're all components of a for the formula. I'll just prefer to control those from a cell rather than from the formula. Should we wish to change them, it's going to make more sense. So BTC slash USD here as before. Start date. I'm just going to go for the start of the year here. It's up to you. I mean, when was Bitcoin invented? I don't know, 2010 or something, was it? Something like that. End date, I'm going to use the today 
formula here that's going to give us today's date. And we're going to see this is an array formula. It will keep pulling in the latest data. Pretty cool. And then for interval, I think it's zero. Gives us daily, but we're going to see in a second. And I'm just going to take the opportunity now to hold down the shift key, make a selection, alt H O W. I'm going to go for 50 in here. That gives us those um, consistently sized columns. That just makes me feel a little bit better. Alt H O W three here. Just going to space things out a bit better. Let's go ahead and build the stock history formula. So not stock history, stock history. And then tab, and then let's navigate to the cells that we've used to input the important piece of information Excel needs. F4, we want the dollar signs in. We want to fix this reference, comma. Start date, I'm navigating using the arrow keys. You could click on these cells, comma again. Notice Excel makes the next bit bold. It says, I'm ready for the next part of the formula. There it is, comma again. Now we've got intervals. So we could take the daily price, weekly, monthly price, how cool is that? Powerful stuff. I'm going to go for daily hair. And then after, is this all we need? Headers? Yeah, I do want the header hair. And that's that's it for now. That's going to get us started. So just hit enter here and then take a second to just watch the magic happen. This is an array formula. So you can see Excel has done this thing called spilling. Excel has spilled down to fill up all the way to the bottom, which is yesterday's date. And the price was 65,000. There, control shift up. I can see we've got 310 entries there. That's because we're 309 days through this year. So that's pretty close, but we want to move. That's pretty cool, but we want to move towards this candlestick chart. Might we be able to do that in Excel? Do you know how to do that in Excel? Might want to stop the video, try to do it yourself first. Let's see what the options are. So insert, then let's check out some of these charts. This looks pretty good, doesn't it? So we're interested in stock. We've got this stock option here, and we want open, high, low, close. So we're not calling it a candlestick chart in Excel, but this is what we want, open, high, low, close. So for this chart to work, we need those four pieces of data. Let's see if we can do that using the stock history formula. So I'm going to go Control R here, autofill right. Is that going to work? To work from here, autofill right. No, it doesn't seem to. So I'm just going to uh, copy this, control C, escape, F2, puts me into formula editing mode, and copy this formula in. We've got date and close again. Um, so what do we want now? Well, it's open we want first. So we've got headers. Now if we hit comma again, we get to properties. And this gives us the option. Do you want uh, close open? What do we want? So I think it's open we want first. So let's go open to. And we can see we've got open in. Now I think we can autofill right, shift and right arrow, control R. Um, so we currently have value at the moment. Ah, yeah, classic error, schoolboy error, you might say. Yeah, we need um, the absolute references here and here. Okay, control R here. Okay, open. I'm just going to remind ourselves what we needed. Remind me anyway, what we needed for this chart. So open, high, low, close. So high we want next. So F2 here. So what's high then? And I'm really needing these uh, properties now. So high is three at the end here. We've got the high coming in. It's higher than the open. Seems to make sense, doesn't it? Control R here. And then we want the low. So F2 again. And is low two by any chance? Uh, low is four. We've got the open, got the high, the low. Does that make sense? Yes, the lower is lower than the high and lower than the open. Just doing those little checks as we go through. That's going to help avoid bigger problems later. Then finally, the close. So here we go. So one gives us the close price. So this gives us open, high, low, close for the price of Bitcoin. We've got our data and we're going to create our chart in just a second. But let me know, guys. Are you enjoying this kind of video? I've done loads of projects in Forex, back testing, creating uh, strategies. If you'd like to see me do that in Excel and harness the power of Excel uh, to do all that fu exciting financial trading stuff, very happy to do that. Leave me a comment below and let me know what video you'd like to see. So let's select our data here. Um, do we need the headers? I don't think so. And I'm just going to do, say, I'm going to do down to row 19. So um how many uh that's about 12 isn't it no that, that's 11 rows of data you can do however however many rows you want this is just, just going to allow me to demonstrate things a bit better 
So when you create a chart, I always recommend pre-selecting the data. The data is pre-selected. Inserts, then we want our uh, open, high, low, close. Clicking on the chart there, and there it is. There's our chart. Now, just for display purposes, can we get this kind of situation where I want the data and the chart in one shot, something like this? Yeah, this is exactly what we want. So we've got the chart. How can we improve the chart? You know, I don't think we're going to get the visual appeal of the coin market cap chart. Thank you to coin market cap for having a great website that I'm using today, by the way. I don't think we're going to get that visual appeal, but we can certainly improve the visuals. Now, what's wrong with this, this chart? Stop the video. See if you can come up with two or three things that you could improve about this chart. Can you critique this chart? Uh, one thing is all this area here, it's not being used, is it? Our axis starts at zero doesn't need to start at zero. That's going to make the candles bigger, make them easier to understand. So I'm going to go ahead, select these axis labels, go to format at the top, format selection. I can see vertical axis, axis is selected. And then for minimum, something like 20, I'm going to go 22,000 here. But of course, we want to make that minimum below the minimum data in the data set. You could use a min formula to find the lowest value in the data set. And you can see suddenly uh, those candlesticks just seem quite a lot easier to read. So by controlling that data range, we can improve the readability of the chart. Uh, what else would we want to do here? Well, first, let's do some checks. Let's do, do some checks. Is this chart actually accurate? I'm going to look at our last piece of data. So that's on row uh, 19 here. So the close should be around 33. Okay, so the close is at the bottom. So this should be a red stick because the close is lower than the open. The low is about 30, seems to be about right. The high is about 39, seems to be about right. And then the open is uh, 38, seems to be about right. Okay, so always take the time to do those checks. Do we need chart title? No, we can go ahead and delete that. What about these colors? Yeah, we want to get those red and green colors. That's going to improve the visual appeal of the chart. So let's go ahead, um, chart design. In fact, let's go format, and then these should be red. So I'm going to go ahead and select red, and then these should be green. So I'm going to go ahead, select these, format, and then green. And then you could do more work to improve the appearance of the chart. One thing I'm going to do to improve the readability, I'm going to add minor grid lines, minor grid lines, horizontal grid lines. So if you go to chart design, add chart elements, and then grid lines, and then primary minor horizontal, I can see the readability, the readability of this chart is improved. Do we need the series at the bottom? No, we don't, but we would rather have the dates at the bottom rather than just one, two, three, four. That's going to help people understand what the chart's all about. So if we go to select data, edit here, and then axis label range, let's click on here, go across to the dates there from row nine to row 19, hit enter, OK, and then we should have our dates appearing in the chart. And that's how to create a candlestick type chart for Bitcoin in Excel. I'm sure you can go ahead and improve the appearance of this chart further. So let me know, guys, do you want to see more videos like this? I've done a ton of projects in Forex, financial trading, strategies, backtesting, VBA, data tables, some really cool stuff. I'd love to do some videos like that. Let me know in the comments below, guys what videos you'd like to see. And the next video to watch is in the pinned comment below this one. I'll see you there.